Well, <clears throat> tonight I want to uh, share with you again from the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. And these verses are very important. Someone has said uh, people uh, seldom lose their religion by a bullet. They just usually have a slow leak. <laughs> and I think that's absolutely true. And this is what Paul is going to be dealing with here. So chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. And this day I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, drawing and beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be in your house once again tonight. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we've come and we're here for no other purpose than just simply to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray for all of those of our congregation that are away. Many of them have gone to be with their children, different things on Father's Day. And so we pray that this will truly be a blessing for them. And we do pray for the fathers of the land because it's in the homes where the father uh, takes control and, and leads out. And who, as I shared this morning in Psalms 1, who really is a blessed individual and children will truly uh, worship their Father and praise Him and thank Him, just as we should worship our Heavenly Father and praise Him. I pray, Lord God, that tonight you'll speak through this, you servant, the words that you have to speak. Help us to glean from what the Apostle Paul is saying here so that we might grow, we might become stronger Christians, that we might just move on to maturity and become more and more every day like you. We pray and we ask all this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Well, <clears throat> in the Christian life, you know, we never stand still. We either go forward or we gradually slip backwards. So that the uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verse 1, really speaks to us. It says, let's go on to maturity. It's a call, I think, that every Christian must obey. The Christian who is not making spiritual progress is an open target for the enemy to attack and destroy. Satan is very deceptive. He wants to lead believers astray, and to do this, he'll use deceptive words, arguments. By the way, Satan's a liar, and he's a father of lies. And John 8, chapter 8 tells us that. And by his lies, he leads people down the, the wrong path. And so many people listen to him, and they are off on, you know, going places they shouldn't go and doing things they shouldn't do. It's so important that we use spiritual discernment in life's journey try, as we travel down life's way and that we continue to grow. <clears throat> we need to continue to grow in the knowledge of God and in spiritual truth. One of the ways that we grow is stay in the Word of God. We talked about that this morning. Because the person who truly knows the Word of God and stays the Word of God is, is truly blessed. Now, in these verses that I've read to you here, oh, please, somebody go get that for me. Not everybody, but one person. The youngest, that's everybody. <laughs> Paul uses several 
vivid truths to picture our spiritual progress here. In verse 5, he uses a picture of the army. <clears throat> now, the words order and steadfastness are military terms. Uh, they describe an army that is solidly, stands very solidly against the enemy. You know, an order describes an army with every soldier in his proper place. You know, an army, I, some of you have been in the army, you know this, every, so, every soldier is not a general. I don't know what if everybody was a general, you wouldn't get very far. <laughs> But the, and the general could never fight the fight, you know, the battle alone. So you've got to have these people in, in the ranks who will follow, who will obey, who will take orders and do all of those things. Steadfastness then pictures a soldier in battle formation, presenting a solid, solid front to the enemy. And that's, you know, that's what Christians do. Christians are to be making progress in discipline and in obedience, just as a soldier on the battlefield. One of the things that I remember very vividly about the, my little time in the army was that I started, I didn't know nothing. <laughs> but it wasn't long until uh, they had me marching in step and doing the things that, that you know, soldiers do. And you had to learn, you had to pick it up, and you had to move on and do what, uh, what uh, those in charge would tell you to do. So that's what he's saying, that we're to stand fast, we're to be in order, we're to be like an army. Now, the second picture we have here is a picture of a pilgrim. <clears throat> you know, the Christian is, uh, is compared to a pilgrimage, and the believer must learn to walk. You know, we must walk worthy of the Lord. Uh, chapter 1, verse 10 tells us that. In Ephesians, by the way, the little book of Ephesians, Paul uses this image at least seven times. We've got to walk in truth and faith and, and in love and so forth. And he goes on to say that we're to walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. The same way we originally received him, we are seated by faith, and we are to walk. We are continue to walk in faith. Now, those false teachers, they want to always want to introduce some new truths for Christian maturity. Uh, Paul just simply denounced them. You know, he, start, he said, you started in faith, you must continue in faith. And this is the only way to make any spiritual progress. It's amazing to me that how many people start out, uh, they accept the Lord. They start out, they're like a house on fire or something, they just want to do. But it's not long until Satan begins to, to whisper in their ear and get them off on something else and they're going in the wrong direction, doing the wrong thing. So, we must always walk worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then the third picture here that we have is the scene in verse 7 is a picture of a tree. You know, he says, uh, by the way, rooted is a word that we're familiar with. Uh, you ever planted something, you want to get the roots down in the ground? You know, uh, <laughs> I remember when I first moved here, there was a little bush out back didn't look too good, so I said, you know what? I'm going to plant an orange tree there. I'm going to dig that thing up, and I'm going to plant an orange tree. Well, I went to work, and that thing had roots. I think went to China. <laughs> I like to never got that thing out of the ground, you know. I thought it would be easy, but, you know, uh, the roots are, went down deep, and they went in every direction, so it wasn't easy to do. <clears throat> Christians are to be grounded, to be rooted. Now, you know what? The problem is, too many Christians are like tumbleweeds. How many of you know what a tumbleweed is? You ever been out west? <laughs> you see these, they, they just roll, go everywhere, you know, anywhere the wind blows, that's the way they go. 
Christians are not to be that way. You know, we're to put down roots. We're to be grounded. <laughs> you know, Ephesians chapter 4, 13 says that we're not to, not to be translated. We're, we're to be, uh, uh, that means we're not to be repeatedly moved from one soil, type soil to another. Once we're rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's no need to change the soil. That's what Paul's saying. You know, we get our nourishment, we get our strength, we get our ability, we get it from the Lord Jesus Christ. What else do we need? This is what Paul is saying. And, you know, it just seems like it was so hard, uh, or it's so hard today for people to understand that. It is so wonderful that the Christian churches in Paul's day, they just, they were rooted and grounded and they were steadfast and they were in order. They didn't get carried away by the thing. All the Gnostics and the false teachers and all come along and they try to get them, you know, going. I've shared this with you before, but most of the people who belong to the Jehovah Witness, these other groups like that, they were one time Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterian, and all that. Someone come along and got them carried away, moving off, doing things that they shouldn't have done. Also in that verse of scripture, there's a picture of a building. You know, this is an architectural term. And is, by the way, it's in the present tense, being built up. When we trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we are on solid ground. We have, we're on a solid foundation. We don't need anything else. And from there, from that solid foundation, we are to grow in grace and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word edify just simply means to build up. To build up. To make spiritual progress. What it means is, it means keep an adding to, the, to this old body, to the glory of God. In other words, you heard me say it, and I believe it, although I don't always do it. But we're to be a better Christian tomorrow than we're today. Now, you know, I say that, then tomorrow I, I probably, something will happen and I, I'll go back a little late. But the Lord understands that. But we strive to be better Christians every day and grow in maturity. Also in that verse of Scripture, there's a picture of a school. <laughs> you know, it is the Word of God that builds and strengthens Christians. And I cannot emphasize enough to stay in the Word of God. Read it. Study it. Meditate upon it. I don't know how you, uh, when you have your Bible reading, I pray that each one of you do. You, you have some time that you set aside and you, uh, uh, you know, I know, however you do it, you want to read the Bible through, that's all right, if you want to take uh, certain portions or what have you. But have some system of studying the Bible. Also, I would say that every Christian needs to be in Sunday school. Because in Sunday school, that's where the Bible is taught. You know, and, and by the way, I'd say this, in, in the past year, we've had some of the best lessons, I think, that you, you can come up with. And we're just so thankful unto God for that. Now here in the, in the, the church of Colossae, Epaphras, the man who started the church, had faithfully taught the Colossians the truth of God's word. Now he, he you know, he got that from Paul in Ephesus, and he started the church there, and now he was teaching them about God's word. But you see, what is happening then, uh, false teachers were trying to undermine that doctrine. They come along and said, well, you know, you need something else. It's not enough just simply to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. 
So you and I, if we stay in the Word of God, we know God's Word, we get established in us, we're being built up, then I want to tell you something. It's very difficult for Satan to deceive a Bible-taught Christian. You know what? You know the Word of God. And when these people come along trying to get you to do something, go somewhere else, whatever it might be, if you understand the Word of God, you in, a, in God's Word, then, you know, you won't get carried away by every little wind of doctrine that comes along. The next picture he shows here is, of course, the picture of a river. The word abounding. What kind of a... That's abounding. <laughs> the word abounding, it, you know, it pictures a river that overflows its banks. You know, our first experience of the Lord is drinking the water of life by faith. We accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the water of life, and he puts within us an artesian well of living water. But you know something? This artesian well should become a river of living water. John 7, 37 tells us that. It's to go deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger as we live our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. The image of the river uh, flowing, of course, comes from Ezekiel uh, uh, chapter 47. You remember that passage, I'm sure. Uh, the, uh, the water is coming out of, flowing out of the uh, uh, temple, flowing from, out from the south side, and a man was sent out to measure it. And first, the first time he measures it, it's ankle deep. Then the second time, it's knee deep. And the third time, it's waist deep. And then the fourth time he goes to measure it, he can swim in it. It's so deep. That's, this is what Paul is referring to as the kind of a life that a Christian ought to have. We start out, you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Savior. You know, you're just ankle deep. But you don't want to stay there. You know, you want to mature, you want to grow, you want to become a stronger Christian every step of the way. That's right, I, I have trouble, and the Lord will forgive me for that, but I have trouble with people who say, you know, I've been a Christian for 40 years. You know, well, why don't you go to church? Ah, well, I can worship under out there on the tree. I go fishing every Sunday, I, you know. <laughs> Is something wrong with that? It's not that you can't worship under the tree. You can worship God anywhere, but listen to me. You want to grow. You want to become a mighty river for the Lord God. How wonderful it is to see. I always brag on you, Thelma, but dear, Thelma's tell me in a few days she'll be 91 years old. What a wonderful thing it is that she's still playing the piano and doing a wonderful job of it. I think also Miss Eloise, she's in heaven now, probably playing organ up there. <laughs> but yeah, you see, that's the way we're to be. We're not to stop, we're not to quit, we're not to say, well, okay, I'm saved, I'm on my way to glory, uh, you know, that's it. No, Paul said, listen, you need to mature, move on to maturity. You need to grow more like the Lord Jesus Christ every day. It's sad. It's sad. So many care, you know, they don't care about making any progress in their Christian lives. Uh, they just shallow, trick, just trickling along, you know. They never become a mighty river for the Lord. Uh, the last thing he mentions, by the way, in this, this uh, verse 7 is interesting. He says, rooted and built up and steadfast in the faith, established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding, 
And then he adds there, uh, therewith with thanksgiving. One of the things that a mature Christian do, he always has a spirit of thanksgiving. He'll thank God continually. And he'll thank God for those who help him along the way. Your Sunday school teacher, or whoever it might be, some deacon or some pastor or some, you ought to thank God for them. Be thankful that they've done these things. Paul says to the church of class, you know, Epaphras started this work. You ought to thank God for him. For he did. You grow on mature. But you never come to the place where you're not thankful for what someone else did for him. These testimonies were given by our fathers and all, and, and people who have led us along the way. Uh, my mother and grandmother and all. You know, I thank God for them. I just praise God for them. And I praise God for you. And I praise God for for uh, others who along the way have certainly helped me. Now, a growing Christian can be easily defeat the enemy. If you're a growing, mature Christian, <laughs> I tell you something, Satan will have a hard time leading you astray. Because your spiritual roots are deep in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you won't want any other soil, or you won't want to be planted somewhere else, or you won't want to listen to what these other people have to say. If he's studying and growing in the Word, you know, you won't be enticed with these false doctrines. Why? Sometimes, you know, people get so caught up uh, in some of these things. I remember the wife's sister telling me about uh, this guy out in Texas and what all he was doing and everything. And I uh, looked up to see who he was. Well, yeah. But he was so far off the track, you know, that it's sad to see that people get caught up in that. You know, the thing is that Paul says all you need is the Lord Jesus Christ. You're rooted and you're grounded in Him. And you should be growing in Him. And you should become a stronger, more dedicated, dedicated Christian every way. And your heart should be overflowing with thanksgiving. <laughs> That's it. You know what? You stay in the Word of God. Mature. Grow. Become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Because a grounded, growing, grateful believer is not easily led astray. Satan won't be able to lead you astray. My prayer tonight is that you'll take Paul at his word and you'll be grounded, rooted, be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, be like a mighty army marching on to victory. Ah, you know, all of these things. And when you do, Satan will not be able to defeat you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for these wonderful, precious words. We know that when we're saved, we're saved by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that he is all we need. We don't need to do anything else. We also know that once we're saved, and we're saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, then we're to grow. We're to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ every day of our life. We'll never, we never come to full maturity. We'll never be perfect. But we're to strive for that. We're to do everything that we can do to become more like our Lord and our Savior. But we must stay in your word. We must study it. We must meditate it. We must attend your worship services. We must be with other Christians and listen to those who would teach us and direct us. And then as we grow and mature, we too 
will become like a mighty river. And Father, I pray that tonight, each one here under the sound of my voice, will say, yes, I want to be more like my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to do everything I can possibly do to be just that. Help us, Lord God, to move on to maturity. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.